Um, I want to begin by saying that we're gathering for worship today on this beautiful land that the Creator has made. It is the land that was and still is Mi'kmaq land, and it is the ancestral, unceded land of the Mi'kmaq peoples. We acknowledge that this land was never surrendered, and I hope that you will always work for reconciliation with our indigenous neighbors, listening, learning, and responding in loving action. This is a great day of thanksgiving, of, of uh, counting our blessings, of pausing to share, share with God our great gratefulness. Can you hear me, Charles? We're on page 185 of the Green Book. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Creator of the fruitful earth, you made us stewards of all things. Give us grateful hearts for all your goodness and steadfast wills to use your bounty well, that the whole human family today and in generations to come may with us give thanks for the riches of your creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. The first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 7 to 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, 
an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow from you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand has gotten me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. The word of the Lord. Psalm 65. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be performed in Jerusalem. To you that hear prayer shall all flesh come because of their transgressions. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you will blot them out. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to, d- to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the things you show us and your righteousness. O God of our salvation, O hope of all the things of the earth and of the seas that are far away. You make fast the mountains by your power. They are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dust to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys clothe themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians Chapter 9, verses 6 to 15. The point is this, the one, who's, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you, as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that By always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest and your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity which will produce thanksgiving to God through us for the rendering of this ministry, not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel, of the gospel of Christ, and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others. While they long for you, and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Also with you the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. 
When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, whom he saw that when he saw that he was healed and turned back, praising God with a loud voice, he prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus said, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Before I begin my sermon, I just want to tell you that I had a, a mishap this week where I was walking along a sidewalk and there were brackets coming out to hold up the fence that was closing off the construction area. And I met a man and I thought, he's a, it's a nice face, I'm going to say good morning to him. And I looked up, I said good morning, and then I was airborne. I, 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 but I caught myself. My face was like that on the fence which was large mesh like this. And I could see that I could grab it, and I grabbed it in an instant and saved myself from falling, which would have probably taken a lot of my skin away. But then by the end of the day, I realized how many muscles I had used in saving myself. I'm not sorry that I did. He asked me if I was all right, and I said, is there any blood? He said, no. I said, I'm fine. <laughs> but it's, it, it's, it was more a, a, a trauma, and so it made concentrating very difficult. So like I said at, at the 8.30 service, if this sermon doesn't make any sense, you'll understand. But when I read it, I thought it made more sense than some of my other sermons, so let's go. This great company of Israelites is still on their journey home. Many years have come and gone. People have died. People have been born. Moses, their great leader who has come from God to lead them home, is speaking to them in earnest. This passage of promise is part of a much longer speech about not thinking that prosperity is their right like that sense of entitlement that I so much dislike in the province where I lived for a while. The promise of a land that flows with milk and honey is a great prize to keep their eye on. And they are being charged to remember that God is the giver of everything. Don't praise yourselves for your good fortune. All blessings are from God. The psalm writer is overwhelmed with praise and thanksgiving. He recalls all the ways that God has blessed their people, delivering them from oppression, calming the sea, creating the earth with mountains and valleys. Water and food are supplied, grains and livestock are provided, and all of this thanksgiving evolves into great hope for not only the people of Israel, but all the people to the ends of the earth. And though he doesn't say this, I think he also means to the end of time, including us. St. Paul, in writing to the Corinthians, the Christians in Corinth, he's, is showing the people how to accept the bounty from God and to share it beyond themselves. This is true thanksgiving. And he reminds them that 
God loves a cheerful giver. Not one who's giving out of, you know, being pressed into it or, you know, made to feel guilty. Giving because they want to give. Today we give thanks for all the harvested foods from our planet that will bring us around our table with people we love for a special thanksgiving for God's abundance. Fall harvest gathers us around many vegetables and many options for protein. I say it that way because I'm going to be at a vegan Thanksgiving dinner today and I won't see turkey at all. And many kinds of pies and crisps with ice cream on top. It's not just about food. It's about the people around us and those who used to be around us to share life. It's about all good things. It's about life itself. When I think of Thanksgiving, the word gratitude comes to the forefront and remains with me for a long time, all week, constantly begging me to open up this word. And I was spying from my bed on the bookshelf, Word Origins. But I didn't go to that book. It was just too far up to reach with sore muscles. I went to the internet. The Greek word for gratitude means to be thankful, to honor the one who gives to you. The Hebrew word for gratitude means to recognize the good. You have to see it, to feel it, to know it on the inside. It means to be able to, to acknowledge the giver with deep thanks. And it's even more than that. Gratitude is an act of worship. And I take that to mean that our gratitude is expressed in so many ways toward God and God's people. And it's not about just landing in church and doing it here, but waking up in the morning and, and thinking something like this. Thank you for the night of rest. Thank you for the morning light. Thank you for your presence here. Thank you for our lives. That's an act of worship. Now, there are some hints in the reading from Deuteronomy about gratitude. <clears throat> God has done so much for you. Do not fall into the human trap of believing you got it all by your own work. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. These are words for all of us, for all time. At a marriage enhancement session on budgeting, the leaders of my parish, I was involved too, urged the couples to think about how much of their income they would put to housing, groceries, entertainment, and they included charities. And one young man said that his money was his and he had no intention of giving it away. And I think he was the loser because there is so much power in good, for good, when we give it away. We can make good things happen and we can be the answer to someone's prayer in giving. And we are so encouraged by the psalm writer. Praise is due to you, O you who answer prayer. He shows how many and basic are the things which God provides, and not just the food for people, but the landscape and the sources in the landscape for retrieving water. He talks about water all the time. It's one of the pillars of life. Our awareness of God's presence in the world is fundamental to gratitude. Praying to God that we may see what God sees is important. Thanking God for what we see is important. Sharing from what we have is important. Our awareness of God's presence in our lives is extremely important. Pausing to count our blessings. 
knowing that God is ever-present in hope, courage, resilience, in our forgiving, in our striving for peace and justice, in our asking for forgiveness, in all good things. The passage from Luke today shows us what Jesus sees. He sees ten men who are banished from their families and community. They are lonely. They must call out when anyone gets near that they have the dreaded disease leprosy. In the slightest chance that they might be free of this scourge, they must go and show themselves to the priest for a pronouncement of now being cleansed. He tells them to go to the priests and to show themselves to whoever inspects them. And as they go, they see that they are healed of the isolating, debilitating, and joy-robbing illness. The one person among them who is not a Jewish person comes back to thank Jesus by falling at his feet and praising him. Jesus wonders where the others are. We wonder where they are too. But there are so many people like the Samaritan who can see what a gift has been added to their lives. And I think the one who comes back to give thanks is so much the richer. He has come into relationship with Jesus. Jesus speaks to him alone as he says, Your faith has made you well. What an affirmation of what Jesus sees in this man. This is what we all receive when we express our gratitude to God for all that we have. Gratitude is about counting the blessings that we have and not thinking about what we don't have. What we don't have doesn't matter. What we do have matters greatly. We receive a closer walk with God when we thank God. A trust in one greater than everything we know greater than anything we can ask or imagine, a friendship with God. Gratitude evolves into generosity. Wherever we go, wherever we find ourselves, let us pray that we share in the highest, deepest, broadest, and largest love that we can muster. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves to join in one of the great anthems of the Church, the Apostles' Creed. You may stay as you are or stand if you wish. Let us join in together at the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please prepare your hearts for prayer, and our prayer leader will guide us. You may sit, kneel, or stand for prayer. Prayers of the People, Thanksgiving 2023, adapted from, from Giving in Grace Liturgical Services, Matthew and Christine Longhurst. 
Creator, we thank you for the gift of life and all it includes. Like the Israelites in the wilderness, we too have known your love and experienced your care and provision. You invite us to extend that love to the world around us, to care for others as deeply as we care for ourselves. And so we bring the needs of our world before you now. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the many who do not have enough, enough food to eat or shelter to keep warm, enough employment or money to pay their bills, enough medicine or medical care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for those who have more than enough, but who still struggle to find meaning and purpose in life, who indulge in dangerous or self-serving activities to dull their pain or loneliness. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Lord, in your word, you teach us that sparse sowing means meager reaping. Give us generous hearts as we respond to your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you teach us that generous heart produces a bountiful harvest. Pour your love within us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you teach us to pray for those who govern us. Bless bless all in positions of authority who take decisions for the nations of your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you teach us to bring your healing to the sick and suffering. May your healing be upon those whom we name before you now. Norman, Shirley, Phil, Anne-Marie, Sharon, Luke. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, your grace reaches out to all of us. You call us to live as citizens of heaven, working together with one heart and mind. Strengthen us to live in a manner worthy of the good news we have received, offering our lives in service of your kingdom, where the last are first and the first are last, and there is grace enough for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with your whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of God is here among us. Let us share it with one another. Peace. I won't get too close. It's okay. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Our offertory hymn is number 259, 259. Source of all life, the heaven and earth are yours, yet you have given us dominion over all things. Receive the symbols of our labor and love, which we offer you this day, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Page 196, Eucharistic Prayer Number 2. I'm changing that. Let's go to number four. It's on page 201. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise, O Lord, our God, sustainer of the universe. You are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar, interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. 
From the primal elements you brought forth the human race, and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation. But we turn against you and betray your trust, and we turn against one another. Again and again you call us to return. Through the prophets and sages you re reveal your righteous law. In the fullness of time you sent your Son, born of a woman, to be our Savior. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. By his death he opened to us the way of freedom and peace. Therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, who proclaim with them your glory in their unending Blessed are you, Lord our God, for sending us Jesus the Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends, and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup of wine. He gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, we recall the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, we proclaim his resurrection and ascension, and we look with expectation for his coming as Lord of all the nations. We who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring you these gifts. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon the offering of your church, that we who eat and drink at this holy table may share the divine life of Christ our Lord. Pour out your spirit upon the whole earth and make it your new creation. Gather your church together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom, where peace and justice are revealed, that we, with all your people of every language, race, and nation, may share the banquet you have promised. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all. As our Savior has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Breaking of the bread, sentence number two. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God.
God of hope, in this Eucharist we find the source of all your blessings. Nourished in these holy mysteries, may we, with our lives, give you continual thanks and praise. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Page 214. Glory to God, whose working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. A Celtic Blessing May the Maker's blessing be yours, encircling you round above you within you. May the angel's blessing be yours, the joy of the saints, to inspire you, to cherish you. May the Son's blessing be yours, the wine and the water, the bread and the stories, to feed you, to remind you. May the Spirit's blessing be yours, the wind, the fire, the still small voice to comfort you, to guide you. And may the blessing of each one be a blessing to all others, a blessing rooted in our common pilgrimage, the blessing of friends. Amen. Just be seated for a moment. And I have to ask if there are any announcements that, we, that aren't in the bulletin. Pat. Good. As you are all aware, next Sunday is our combined service with uh, Apostles Church, and we do the hymn sing. Last year they hosted, this year we host. So uh, if it would be nice, if anyone would like to bring in a tray of something for our coffee hour next week, a uh, plate, and I would appreciate it if you're bringing something in, if you would plate it at home, ready to be served, and then anything that's left over when coffee hour is over, you can take, pick up your plate and take it home with you and have it for lunch. And so appreciate it where we haven't actually listed who's bringing what, but they did an excellent, absolutely fabulous job of hosting us last year, so we hope to return the favor. Thank you. Thank you, Pat, and uh, thank you to our servers today, Della and Natasha, and to the people who decorated our church so beautifully, and to our choir members and our organist, and to the people of our um, uh, Chancel Guild who uh, so beautifully set up our table for worship and all other things that they do, like candles and things. And thank you to Jane, who assisted this morning. She took my place, I took Katie's place. Okay, well, thank you. I'm so glad you were here. I can do it on my own, but it makes it way better. Um, any, any special holidays? Yes. Thirty-third anniversary for Natasha and Brian. That's great. On the thirteenth. Hmm. What was that? Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. Oh, that's a good day. Uh, Joyce. Doug's birthday. Great. To you give out your age, Doug? Oh. Any more? I'll give out my age. I'll be 77 on Wednesday. Yes, I, uh, whoa. 90 year olds clapping for me. Thank you very much. <laughs>
I, I, I can't, what you know, like people say they can't believe they've reached the age they've reached. I can't believe I've reached 77 almost. Uh, uh, but I, I do know that every part of me is the same age as me. So my muscles, <laughs> my bones, <laughs> anyway, starting to feel that. Well, it'll be better when I get over this tumble. Uh, anything else, any sorrows or joys that we want to bring forth? Any update on uh, Luke? Uh, Alice? Hmm? Still waiting, still in that limbo? Okay. Well, let's pray. God, besides all the thanks we give you for the gifts of life, we give you thanks for Natasha and Brian's anniversary of 33 years, for the sparkle they bring to each other's life, for the trust they share, for the love that is strong between them and in their family that spills over to all of us. We thank you for Doug. Thank you for, is there somebody else's birthday besides mine? No, thank, thank you for Doug, for his life, and thank you for my life, that it's still going on. And we pray that our lives may go on with health and strength for many years to come. We pray for Luke, Alice's son, and for all their family as they, they live through this time of waiting to find out what will be the next step in his health and healing. We offer these and all of our prayers in the name of Jesus, our great shepherd and our friend. Amen. Anything else? Then let's sing our hymn, which is number 425.
peace, joy, love, generosity, and gratitude to serve God and God's people. Thanks be to God. down for the hymns, that would be good. 